Okay, I think we're there now. Wait, hold up. Okay, finally, we are back. Every Hi, Alice. Okay, I am here. I don't know if my, my page is working, but I want to say everybody's live now. Hey, people, I couldn't see myself on the video earlier. I don't know what happened. Hi, Alice, what do you think about the new look? You like? I know you're going to say you like it. So listen, I get the Okay, thank you. Oh, my personal, okay. That's Asda Tolulu. My personal page is on my phone. I see one person, so that's good. So let's get started. We don't have too much time. Hi, Vicky. Hi, everybody. Buenas tardes. Happy Sunday. We are going to get started. So we are going live. So, you know, I told you guys that, thank you, thank you, that when I turned 50, I was going to become. So I said, I've been becoming all year long. So the month of September marks 50 and a half. So I thought, if I'm going to get a new look, I need to do it now. So this morning, to the horror of my beloved, I was like, chop, chop, chop. She's like, you're cutting your hair. I said, look, it's just hair, OK? It's just hair. It's going to grow back. And if it doesn't grow back, that's fine. There's people dying of cancer who are losing their hair every day. It is OK. And so I went chop, chop, and ta-da. I'm ready to get started. So we're going to talk about tackling the bully inside. And I only see, I see Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Erin. Erin, guess what? Your baby is a senior. He went back to school today. Can you believe that? Senior in college. But I digress. How is everybody doing? You know what? Oh, I'm not live on Tina Live. I'm not sure what happened with that, but we're going to try again. So we are going to get started. Today, we're talking about tackling the bully inside. Oh, <laughs> my baby went to college. Is that why I'm getting to cry? Oh, well, that's okay. I almost cried at the airport, but me being ever the black butterfly that I am, I get to the airport and I meet this lady who is Nigerian and I hear her accent and I just say bye to my son and I just pounce on her and we start talking like old friends. Never met her before, you know? That's the black girl magic right there. So anyway, I went ahead and, get, and got started and we became friends and I was able to not cry when my baby was going back to school because every single time I drop him off in four years, I always, always, always cry when he goes off to college, goes back to school. So today I kind of sort of diverted that by making a new friend. So um, Miss Vicky is, oh, Miss Vicky, hmm. Miss Vicky, uh, Miss Vicky is supposed to be joining us, but you know, I didn't hear back from you, so I'm so sorry. Uh, um, why don't you tap and go on my personal page, if you don't mind, and ask to join on my personal page on Uche Naome and ask to join. Hi, everyone. Darlene Graham, Funke, Funke, hi, Babalwa. So, everyone, just hang in there. We're supposed to have Miss Vicky Mitch join us for the Facebook Live. Ms. Vicky, I'm going to get started if you can. Just go on my personal page and ask to join and I'll let you in. Okay, ma'am? So, but just to get started. So, you know, we're doing the Back to School series. Today is the first day of September. September is the first day. Um, September is the um, official suicide prevention month. So just a lot of things going on in the Department of Suicide um, in the month of September. Next weekend, in case I forget, I'm going to be in Dallas. We're going to be doing the suicide walk. I'm going to, I'm going to put a link to that. And just a lot of things. So if you're watching me right now and you have a teenager or you have a sister or a cousin or a brother or a friend, have them join in. Have them join in because we're going to be talking about something that spans all of, all of us, not just teenagers. It's going to be all adults. So if you're watching me right now, take a second to invite your friends, to invite your cousins, your kids, anyone that you feel needs to hear the message about not enough syndrome while we wait for Vicky to join me on my page. Vicky, I need you to please join me on my page, please, ma'am. But anyway, so just so you know, we're going to be talking about back to school series with regards to the internal bully. So. There are two kinds of, she, she's there, she said, I don't know what to do. 
Oh, you're on my personal page, Vicky. Just ask to join, Vicky. Let me see. Okay, guys, hold on, okay? Let me see if I can add you. No, it's just for inviting. Vicky, just ask to join and I'll just tap yes. Hi, Bumi. Vicky, if you can hear me, ask to join and I'll tap yes. Like literally, is that simple? I haven't done it before, but I know I, know I can see people when they want to join. So just tap ask to join and I'll, and I'll, and I'll say yes. Oh, wait, wait, I see, bring a friend, okay. Okay, Miss Vicky, I have, I have okayed it to ask you to join. So if you just see the button that says, ask to join, go ahead and join. Hi, hi, Aisha has to be on a phone. Yes, well, I'm on a phone. Are you on, you're not on a phone? Let me go to another device. Okay, all right, but we're gonna get started. Y'all, this is live. You can never edit live. That's why I love, love what I do. So if you're just joining me, we're talking about the bully inside today. We're talking about the internal bully. And just FYI, if you're watching me, can you type in, please, what do you think? Okay, I see you watching. Let's see, I waved at you. Vicky wants me in the video. Good. Approve. Awesome. So we're adding Vicky. Vicky is a speaker. She's a multi-book author, and she's an activist for bullying. She's an anti-bullying activist. It says it's adding you, Vicky. The guest declined the live video. Oh, okay, so I'm not sure what happened. It says you declined it, but I'm going to get started, okay, just so people don't kind of wonder what's going on with Dr. Lulu today. So we're going to talk about the bully inside. And so essentially, we're going to try to tackle that phrase called not enough syndrome. And if you're a doctor and you're watching me, give me a high five because you know about syndromes. But do you know about the not enough syndrome? Do you know that there's a syndrome called not enough? Vicky, I'm asking it to add you, and I'm adding you, but I think somehow you're declining. So don't decline. It says you declined again, so I'm not sure what's going on. But um, the not enough syndrome is that syndrome that makes you feel like you're not enough. It's as simple as that. You're not enough to do anything. You're not enough for anything, okay? You're not beautiful enough. You're not tall enough. Your hair is not cute enough. You're not anything enough, okay? So believe it or not, some people call it the inside critic, but it is actually a bully. It is yourself bullying yourself. So today's topic is tackling the inside bully because there are two kinds of bullies. There's the external bully, which most of us know, and then there's the internal bully, which is yourself. Vicky, I keep asking it to add you, baby girl, and it keeps saying no. It's adding you, Vicky. Just allow it to add you, okay, baby? Thank you. So there you are. Hi! Okay, good, good. All right, no problem. Hey, you know what? This is live. I love the fact that the show is live. You can't edit it, you know? So everything that happens, happens the way it's supposed to happen. And then when I flip it into a podcast, we can edit. But for now, you can't edit. Hi, Vicky. Thank you so much for joining me. So Vicky is... For those of you who are on Tina Live and Ask Dr. Lulu, you can't see Vicky, but that's okay. Vicky is on my personal page, which is awesome because I have more people on that page. So Vicky is an author, multi-book author, and an activist. She's an anti-bullying activist. And how did we meet? We met on Facebook. She's a guest on my podcast, and we gelled so well that I was like, Vicky, let's do this. Let's do this. So this is the month of suicide prevention. So I figure what better month to introduce the fact that there are two kinds of bullies. There's the outside bully, which we all see and we all know who he or she is, but there's a bigger bully, yourself. Vicky, you want to, you want to talk to the people about it? Because this is what you do. This is your thing. Yes. Yes. is what I call in my book, you know, my book series, especially the book of Big Bully in Your Head, is that, that that syndrome that we all say, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough, not whatever enough, and we start to believe it. We start to retain that and believe, oh my gosh, like, I'm not enough. And, I'm not and enough. It's not true. And it's not true. Exactly. It's not, you're right. It's not true. The truth is, how do we get there? 
How do we get to not enough? V Vicky, you want to talk about that? You want me to, take a, to talk about that? How, how, how do we get to not enough? How do you arrive at not enough? Because you know what I always say? Every baby is born weighing six to eight pounds, innocent, lovely, a good person. Then all of a sudden, life happens. So how do you arrive at that? Oh my goodness, I can't try that. I'm not good enough. Oh my God, everybody on Facebook is having a good life. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough hair, whatever. Well, guess what? You guys, if you remember ACEs, we talked about ACEs last week. We talked about the fact that ACEs is adverse childhood experiences. All those bad things, also all those not good things that happened to you as a child, you, you kind of put them in your head and they stay there. All those voices, all that bullying, all the people that said you couldn't do it. Your teacher said you were not good enough. Your mother said you were not good enough. Your friend said you were not good enough. And eventually, if you tell a child that they're not good enough long enough, they absorb it and they become it. Right, Vicky? Absolutely. So Vicky, yes. So Vicky, in the work that you've done with, with children, thankfully, and thank you for your job, thank you for your service, in the work that you've done with children, what have you found is the biggest problem with children in school and this not enough syndrome? Well, I think it starts with, like I said, what I call a bully burst. From when you're young, People tell you things when we're, you know, when we're two years old running around and we trip on things and people say you're clumsy. We don't understand what that means. We just get up ah, and then there's this certain day that we believe that we're clumsy. Like yeah, all of a sudden, right? So that's what I call a bully birth. That day that you actually receive the information that's true, the day you believe it is a bully birth. And so from then, that time forward, you believe that that erroneous information is true. Just because you trip sometimes, just because you're learning to walk, that doesn't mean you're clumsy. And then we, we pull this into our brain, and then when other people say it, then we start to, you know, we start to let it get bigger and wider, and especially in school, right? And especially in school. But even, at, but even at work, even at work, even at work, you just got to this new job. You just got this promotion. Oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do the work, you know, and things like that. Um, um, so, you're, sorry, I, I got distracted. You're not good enough. You can't, you can't handle that promotion. You don't really deserve this, this husband. You don't really deserve to be happy in life. Your brain is telling you lies constantly, which is what an external bully does. They bully you and tell you like, oh, look at you. Oh, your clothes are old. You're not rich enough, you know? And all those negative things over the years, like she said, it's called a bully birth. One day you're like, yes, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to go to, we live next door to, um, to Fiesta, Texas. I'm not good at rides because maybe once upon a time you fell off a, I don't know, a bicycle. And from now on, you're never going to ride a bike again. Or heaven forbid you got in a wreck in a car. Oh my God, I don't want to drive cars because I'm not good at driving. All those things, you just kind of internalize them. And you tell yourself big lies. As far as I'm concerned, they're big lies. They're almost the biggest lies, right? Um, Vicky, it's almost bigger than the external lie because I heard that, I read someone that said, <clears throat> 97% of bullying is psychological. And, and most of that psychological bullying is you yourself already giving in. Today I'm going to get bullied and I'm just not going to be good enough. You know? And then when the bully sees you, no wonder they recognize you. And then they just kind of add to what you already feel, right? Well, I think that's what we really have to hold on to, Dr. Lulu, is that kids, believe that they're going to that's right. And that becomes the internal dialogue that we're reminding ourselves of. And the more we remind ourselves, the more, you know, the larger it becomes and the more overwhelming it becomes, which is why, you know, as we're talking <clears> about suicide prevention, when kids feel bullied externally, it's terrible. But when they have no self-worth internally, <clears> it's like having an entire, what I call the bully brigade, attacking you. And there's no room, there's nowhere to go because you're, you feel like you're lacking a support system, even though the support may be there. But I always say, you know, we have these intimacy bubbles. And the first bubble is your personal bubble. And that, that only includes you. And if you're a believer, it includes God, right? And so, but the problem is, is that with these other bubbles that we've got, we've got the, you know, the intimate bubble and the BFF bubble and the family bubble. We got all these bubbles, but bully is inside the personal bubble. It's in there with, it's in there with you. Yes. So if we don't find a way to evict the bully and replace them with the headspace heroes, like Tom 
happy confidence, the quantum courage, hope, peace, love, you know, compassion. And one of my favorites is empathy. Yes. You know, we don't start using empathy as the, you know, engaging empathy as the tool of choice. Then kids are going to continue to hold on to the anger and they take that internal anger and then they push it outwards on someone else and it's just this never-ending cycle and we have to stop the cycle. If we want kids to change, because adults can't change, because adults are learning as kids. If we change children, we will, we will have happier, more well-adjusted uh, adults that are ruling our countries and our worlds and our corporations and we've got to start when they're young. And, and like I said, for my work, we help everybody from preschool, you know, on a Fortune 500 companies. It doesn't matter how old they are. But we've got to, we have to start. And if we don't get that prevention in, you know, we're, we're, we're doing a disservice. Hey, Melanie, welcome. Thanks, Billion. I see a lot of it. Zach is here. I appreciate you guys being here and support. I hope you'll hit that share button and share this out. I, we, you know how passionate I am about suicide prevention. You know how passionate I am about it. People in your head and, and recognize our own internal value. That's right. And we have the power. Especially with social media. And oh, God. History, we have the power to yes. influence people for the positive. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. You're but you know much. what? You know what, Vicky, of everything you said, which I love so much, and I'm right there with you, right, right there with you, side by side, fighting all the bullies wherever. Because I'm a parent coach, I always come back to the parents. And I just discovered over the last week that parents have to be pretty much no excuses have to be more mindful in the way they raise their kids. And apparently mindfulness means being present, being intentional, but also non-judgmental. You see that little thing you say to your kid, whatever it is that you say to your kid, oh, you are this, oh, shut up, oh, you, you talk too much. Huh? You don't know if they were supposed to be like the biggest journalist in the world. You don't know who they were supposed to be. But because you told them you talk too much and you always tell them you talk too much, they're going to start internalizing that they talk too much and then you take their voice. And then suddenly a kid that was going to be an activist or whatever suddenly is not talking again because his mother told him he talks too much. Parents, we have so much power over our kids that it's not even funny. Like if you say it, your child is going to believe it. You're the first teacher. You are their first teacher. So, of course, if you say it, whether you mean it or not, your kid is going to internalize it, and boom, there it is, right? So if you're just joining us, Yinka, I see you. Keisha Lofton, I see you. A bunch of you guys, Rob and Steph Thompson, I see you. Latoya Walker, Stella, Alice, Anjali, hi, sweetie, Amy Roberts. We're talking about the bully inside. The bully inside, you can, talk, you can clean your windows all you like. Your house can be painted all in likes on the outside. When you come in and there's junk inside your house, we got a problem, people. And that's what we're talking about today. And, and today I have the beautiful, elegant, gorgeous Vicky Fitch joining me. She is a bully activist, anti-bullying activist. She's an author. She's a speaker. She is trying to attack bullying where it starts from early childhood now all of that being said we talked about so we talked about who does this affect vicky who who does this not enough syndrome i'm not good enough who does it affect who thank you except a baby They catch it. Yes. 
I know. <laughs> I know. That is so true. And you're thinking it. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. I love that line of thinking. So if you're just joining us, this is awesome. I've got the beautiful, fantastic Vicky joining us today. She's talking about, or rather we are talking about the bully inside your head, the personal bully, your own cozy bully. But here's what I, I realized, because I, I looked up, I think maybe like 20 articles about this thing in the last couple of days, just trying to make sure that I, I was in, you know, I even read comments on blogs about other people saying that, you know, you tell yourself, oh my God, I'm stupid. That right there, right there. You should not say, oh my God, I'm stupid. You can say, oh my God, there are some things that I'm good at and some things that I'm not good at. And just accept it and be aware of it. But oh my God, I'm stupid. Go ahead. Write it down. Write it down. That's right. <laughs> High five. So Vicky just basically summarized it. Yes, he summarized it. There are some things you're good at and some things you're not good at. Case in point, if you know me, you know all day. I love words. Like, yeah, like literally I love words. I love to talk. I also love to hear people talking, but I love to talk. Now, if you bring my, my, um, my wife now, she does not like to talk. But guess what? She is a major thinker. Now, she will think up stuff and tell me, and then I'll broadcast it. Like, just a, a week or two ago, we were watching something on TV. She was like, you need, to, you need to contact that lady or something like that. And I was like, okay. I didn't think about it. But guess what? I, did? I contacted the lady, and she responded to me. But it was her thoughts. My strength lies in other things, which is speaking. Her strength is thinking. So I'm not going to assume, oh my God, everybody's going to be like me or, oh my God, because I'm not a thinker, then I'm damaged goods in, such, in some way. So what we're trying to say is embrace the things that you're good at, but don't say, oh, I'm stupid. And you know what? We're all guilty of it, just so you know. I'm not saying that I'm not, I don't do it. I am, I'll be the first one to say, I have no patience. And you know what I do is I feed into that line of thinking of, I have no patience. I have no patience. So guess what happened? On, on Thursday or on Wednesday, I was, my car, my, my Roxy, my, my, my Volvo, my, my two-door convertible, my baby, she stopped me at the YMCA. She was like, I ain't going. I'm like, what? What's going on? And very, very, very unlike me. You know, but that's very, very unlike me. I took a deep breath and I was just calm. I was like, okay, it's a smart car. So it read power steering. It needs service. I'm like, now you tell me whatever. I was calm and I just called triple A. And after an hour and 15 minutes in the sun in Texas, the triple A comes and guess what Roxy did? Oh, I'm going to start. And she started. <laughs> and you know what? I laughed it off. I needed to laugh it off because the old me would be like, oh my God, this car. And I know what? I can't beat my car up. What did I do? It was a, a lesson in patience for the number one person that swears I don't have any patience. So I'm just saying, if you know that one thing that you're not good at, rather than putting it down, because it's yourself. And then when people hear you bringing yourself down, it's easy for them to just join you and just say, oh yeah, yeah, aren't you the one that has no patience? Because you told them that you have no patience. So what we're saying today is, evict the bully inside. That is the name of Vicky's book. And y'all, please, if you're watching me, please type it down. Type down the word evict the bully inside. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Felicia. Evict the bully inside. There's the book. There it is. Go find the book. It's called Evict the Bully Inside. Let's make Vicky a best freaking seller. In your head. In your head. Okay. In your head. But you know what? If you write Evict the Bully, I'm saying Vicky's book is going to pop up anyway. Then you know which one it is. And her name is, first name is Vicky. Fantastic. So, Vicky, what are some. I have my little cheat sheet, so I wrote it down. But what are some ideas of, 
you will give us on how to effectively start challenging and or start evicting these bullies, all these bullies in all of our heads. What ideas do you have? Awareness, so yes. Memory, hey, I'm my strengths lie in other areas. I'm not supposed to be perfect in everything. I'm not supposed to know everything and be everything. I'm just a Oh my God, that's the worst one. That's the B arch. I need you to say that again for those at the back. First of all, what do you say about my value does not change regardless of whether I'm rich or poor? Is that what you kind of sort of said? You still bring value to the table. And you know, if you don't believe me, cut off your thumb. Cut off your thumb and see, no, 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 no. I'm very practical, I'm very visual. Cut off your thumb or tie your thumb and see how functional the other four fingers will be. Of course, you will eventually adapt because the human body will adapt, don't get me wrong. But I'm making a point here. If you don't think you're valuable, cut off your thumb and you will recognize the value of your thumb or even your pinky finger. It is the fact that everybody brings value to the table. And for my family, we usually have a round table discussion. I bring up the topic, I have everybody kind of take a jab at it. Yes, I'm Mama Bear, I might end up making the final decision, but it's gonna be edited, you can be sure it's gonna be edited by all of their inputs. And so I want you all to do that with your kids, parents. Allow them to have a say. Even the little four-year-old, let them have a say. Let them start learning to have a voice. Let them start learning to speak up for themselves. Because one day someone is going to say, you're stupid. No, I'm not. You are stupid. Okay? Because the child knows that their value is not stupidity. Either way, you know, the child is going to fight back, speak back. And then tomorrow that bully is not going to pick, pick on that kid. So I don't want his mouth. Well, that's a good thing. So we're talking about how you can evict the bully inside of your head. Your personal bully, your personal critic, call it what you like. The one that tells you you're not good enough for anything. You can't lose the weight. Oh no, you can't, you can't, whatever. I, I don't, I can't even think of anything. That voice that tells you constantly, oh my God, look at there's a man wearing a, there's a woman wearing a hijab. Right away, she's uh, here to, bump the place or right oh we're going to texas oh my god everyone in texas is shooting whatever that thing is telling you don't do it i say first of all challenge it look at the what the instruction is telling you does it really make sense like does it really make sense analyze it first before you say oh yeah you're right i can't do it and then right there you've tied up that that end right vicky I was just going to say, believe it. 
Yes. Internal. Yes. Yes. It's kind of, yes. Not today. Someone please write that down for me. Someone. Someone please write that down for me. Not today, bully. Please write it down for me. Not today, bully. Step one. Yes. And yes. I was just going to say that. A lot of them are family members. My friend Yinka just said another way of looking at it is that we are taken captive of the words of our mouths. Speak positivity into your life. That is all we're saying, Yinka. But you know the first thing we need to do? We need to first recognize that. Did y'all know that 16, we have on a daily basis 12,000, yeah? No, 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts on a daily basis and 80 percent of those thoughts are negative did i i was my mind was blown i was like oh my god so you have between twelve thousand, is that or whatever sixty thousand yeah twelve thousand to sixty thousand thoughts in your head every day and potentially 80 percent of those thoughts are negative so the first thing is like okay today not today i don't want to hear about it challenge it because you know what, that's also yourself that you're challenging. Tell it no, not today. Give it a five, give it a give it give it a finger if you need to. Do what you gotta do, but yes, I keep it real. I know well, 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 well. It is not it's PG 13. So give it give it what you have to do. Do what you gotta do to stop the voice from telling you you can't do it. But you have to first recognize the voice. You have to first hear the voice and analyze that thought process. Is it irrational? If it's irrational, then it is irrational. If it's rational, then you know how they say, if you can fix it, don't worry. If you cannot fix it, don't worry. I mean, it's like, why worry? So I say, ask yourself the question, is this thought process rational? It does it make sense. Why is it telling me that I'm not good enough? I haven't even tried it yet. You know, it's like, how do you know you're not good enough? So awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't understand rational and not rational. It's like, is it making me feel good about myself or bad about myself? When if, if you're saying, you know, I'm not good enough or I'm stupid, that doesn't make you feel good. If you say, you know, um, I'm pretty, that makes you feel good. You may not believe it at first, but those those are the things. It's like, it's not about rational because people that have been told their whole lives that they're ugly, that's rational to them. They to them. Yes. Exactly. Yes. That's right. Yes, and so that's what she. That is so true. So the first thing is recognize it. And the second thing is replace the thoughts. That's what she's saying. Replace it. Replace the, the thought of I'm stupid with the thought of I'm pretty. The thought of I'm, I'm not good enough with the thought of, well, I'm just not good enough yet. Or this, I'm not good at this, but I'm good at that. Or whatever. And in my case, yes, exactly. Replace it. Just replace the thought with something. But you have to be intentional. You have to be able to be mindful enough to recognize when you're going in that direction. And don't, don't forgive it and say, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to do it today. No, don't let it come in at all. Practice 
makes perfect. In medicine, they tell us if you can do something for 21 days, you can stay doing it. That's just three weeks. So challenge it or change it or replace it even better. Replace it with something else. And I love the fact that she says, be compassionate with yourself. Be kind to yourself. This is all the things. You know, you, I know she loves empathy. I love compassion. But they're best friends. They're really like cousins, right? They're basically the same person. Just that one is the next level of there, but they're the same person. Either way, you're like, okay, self, I can't do this to you anymore. Like, I just can't. You need to make friends with your own self and love your own self. I usually just go in and I say, hi, my name is Dr. Lulu. I'm Nigerian. If you have any issues understanding me, let me know. Because I have a different accent. And then that way, you, you don't get to say, ma'am, no, I'm okay because I've already told you that this is how I'm going to sound. But I'm not going to say, I have a nasty accent or I have a bad accent. No, I just have a Nigerian accent. It's different. It's not the same as yours, but it's mine, you know. So as an example, just replace that. And I love her emphasis on humor. Like just, oh my God. Like I said to my car, Roxy, I said, Roxy, I cannot believe this. Like really? Like seriously? Like now you want to move? All right, let's go. And that was it. And I got over it and it was like, fine. But my old self would be like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody come get me. I, am I going to hate a car? It's a piece of metal. Like really? So what does that say about me? But yes, awesome. So that was um, one, two, and I think three. What, is the, what else do what else you want to tell us about how to evict that bully, Ms. Vicky? Yes. You know, there's one of, the, one of the parts of the book talks about don't accept unacceptable behavior. And then I add a caveat, even from yourself, that we have been conditioned to start doing these things. And we, we, we might be able to use the wrong, you know, we use a bully instead of a headspace hero to stand up for ourselves. Like we use anger or parody or frustration. Those aren't, those aren't actually supporting you. All those are doing is being a wall in between what's going on. But standing up for yourself means recognizing that value and being able to say, you know what, I'm sorry for that. That's, that's, that doesn't work for me. When people, you know, tell you they're going to be someone, they don't show up, you know, and then they, this is a repetitive behavior. It's like, mm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be mad at you. I'm just going to move past it, recognize that this isn't a good, we're not a good fit. I'm not mad at you as a person. We're just not, we're not part of the same tribe. Yes. You know, I honoring people's time. Yes. Yes, yes. Calling it a failure versus saying I failed. I like that. I like that. I, I, God, I love it. I love it. I love it. The only failure is refusing to. Two, yes. And you know what? There's that song. There's that song by Aliyah, which comes to my head all the time. If at first you don't succeed, pick yourself up and try again. You can just try again. Try again. And the funny thing about it is, if you look at a toddler, the classic example of a toddler that's learning how to walk. Like, you know, the first couple are kind of wobbly. And then, and you know what they say? I get it. That's what a toddler will say. I get it. An adult would try walking and say, okay, that's it. I'm not trying anymore. Different mindset. The only thing that happened to them was time. The toddler who is toddling, which is actually the, that's what that word came from, unsteady gait, is a toddle. If they're toddling, they're kind of like, uh, but they're like, I got it, I got it. I get. They want to keep trying until they say, they don't say, okay, because I fell 26 times, then I, I'm never going to try to walk again. The toddler knows 
Walking is his mission or her mission. And adults, you feel once or twice, oh my God, I don't know, man. You know, the last couple of times, it didn't work. Yes. And, oh, right. girl. And Vicky, you know, there's something you said earlier on, and I, and I know because you, you, you speak mostly to children, and that's awesome. I speak to their no, parents. I mean, no, I don't just speak to children. Okay, good. I mean, I mean, okay. I, I Very good. Because for me, what I really want out of the, I want the message is, because most of the people watching me are parents. I want the parents to recognize their role, their role in raising these little kids. And there's something you said earlier on about if a child tells you that that person is kind of icky, you know, you're more likely to believe your dog. If someone comes into your house and is not a good person, your dog has seen it, has smelt it, and is not going to let that person in. Now, imagine if it was your child that said the same thing. You'd be like, no, no, go to him. He's a stranger, but go. You know, we, we don't give our kids. You know what I mean? Like the chance that this child also can see, has ESP and can sense Uncle Ikebab. Like this guy's kind of icky. But we're like, no, no, he's uncle. Go, go for it. But the kid is like, no, I don't. And the same thing with the dog. But we're more likely to forgive our dog who is going to do that versus our child. Who is going to do that? Now, who is supposed to be smarter, really? So, parents, if you're watching me, you know me. I keep it real. Today, our topic is evicting the bully in your head, tackling that internal bully, getting to know them, getting to meet them, getting to challenge them, and, of course, eventually kicking them the heck out. Now, even though... Yeah, but, if, but even though by kicking them out, you're technically kicking yourself out because it's you, what I would say is kicking the thought process out. The way the whole process, because it starts with one day, you tell yourself you're not good enough. Then the second day, you're really not good enough. Then the third day, you're truly not good enough. Then the fourth day, that's it, I'm not going to try it. But it started with one thought, one day. So when you feel that thought coming, say, ah, not today, bully, like Miss Vicky said, right? Not today, bully. <laughs> Not today. And, um, and that's it. So I have to say one more thing as a doctor. I have to mention that sometimes you may not be able to handle it yourself. And that's completely okay. That is another level of acceptance. Oh, my God. I have a lot of nice comments. Miss Felicia says, I have taught my kids that bullies are usually struggling with themselves or not getting the attention they need at home. I love it. And I tell people that children have the best sense of character. They sure do. Vic, Felicia, boom, high five. That is so true. So Vicky, was it you that told me hurt people? Who hurt people that are heard, hurt people, yes. So, you know, I, if you're listening to me, you know that people always say hurt people, hurt people, hurt people, hurt people. Vicky changed my perception about it. She said, hurt people, who don't get heard? In other words, insert bully, who doesn't get heard, bullies others. Hurt people who don't get heard. In other words, if that bully, like Vicky, like Felicia said, is not getting attention at home, if they're not getting help at home, if they're not also themselves being accepted by their parents, or their own bully in their head is overwhelming, they will act out, like Vicky said. Then they will now hurt other people. So someone please type that down for me. Hurt people who don't get heard hurt people. I love it, Vicky. I love it. I love it. True. That's right. And I like to say it's absolutely freaking lutely true. That is true. So, Vicky, we're going to start rounding up. Do you have any, um, where can the vi viewers find you? I have to remind myself, I wrote that down. Where can they find you? Where can they hang out with you, get to know you, get some more of your good nuggets? I would love for them to go to my website. You can follow us on all social media platforms at Vicky Bitch, B-I-C-C-H, Bitch, B-I-T-C-H. And that's where you can go there. On all our social media platforms, I live stream every day at 6 p.m. And those of you who happen to be local in Southern California, I start a book signing circuit with Barnes and Noble on September 21st. I would love for you guys to be there. I'll be um, doing a reading out of uh, Direct Selling 101 and A Victim in Your Head. Um, I also have some other days. I'm going back there, so if you're here, you know, you can come and you can hang out with me. I'm also going to be there for Boom! 
I love it. I love it. I had my first event, my first ever event. I love that I had my very first ever event when I turned 50. I didn't have a birthday, a birthday party. I had an event. And the lady who was helping me, was coaching me, she was like, I don't know. She's like, how many do you? I said, I'm, I'm looking like 100. She was like, um, that's pretty ambitious. I was like, uh-huh. But then you don't know me. Like, you got to think positive. I got to aim. You want me to aim for 10? I mean, what do you want from me? I got 34 people. The second time I got 72 people. I said, that's how you do it. You got to think positive. You know what, girl? I wish I was in SoCal. I would definitely come see you um oh vicky are you able to type the link because oh you typed it very good thank you yes it works very good no it's okay it's okay because i, re I need to read a couple of comments anyway i have um Chinya who said please type the website oh she said that already somebody said something else oh yeah felicia said they would try to get attention even if it's negative attention which is as better dad that is very, very true. So if you're just joining us today for the first time, you're late, you missed the party, we had the incredible Miss Vicky Fitch, who is a guest on my podcast. And I hope you guys are downloading and sharing. Thank you so much, by the way, for everyone who's latched onto the podcast and written me comments and found me on Facebook and said nice things to me. I appreciate it. It's, it's a work of God. That's all I can say. I thank you. I thank God for the the idea in my head and i'm hoping i'm going to take it to the next level i thank vicky for joining us today vicky my girl you know i love you it's been awesome thank you for saying yes when i asked you without notice um and believe it or not after we did all this flyer and everything i forgot to post even one single flyer i didn't post I I know, I didn't post a single flyer because I'm not used to doing that. I posted that I was going to do the talk and it just didn't occur to me because indeed I have ADD and I don't mind saying it because I have ideas in my head nonstop. And I was like, let me just post it before I forget. And I just did and I didn't remember that. When I said, like, there is a flyer. So I'll put the flyer up. You have a VA service. So if you, as part of one of my companies, we have a VA service. So if you need some people to help you get organized in that area, would you help me with I will do it. I will definitely let you know. And I know you're going to give me a discount because, you know, that's how friends roll. So <laughs> I'm putting your business out there. So thank you all so much. Real quick, you know, we have to go through everything. So essentially, we talked about there is indeed a bully that lives in your head. It is you. It is your alter ego. It is your other voice. It's your critic. In the Nigerian Igbo land, we say it is your chi or your ikenga. Whatever you call it, it is that voice that tells you, you can't do that. No, ma'am, you can't do that. Like, you're not even pretty enough. You're not good enough. You're not qualified enough. Whatever, enough. So Vicky told us that the first thing you got to do is, first of all, say, okay, I see you. I see you coming, but not today, bully. Bye, back off, you know, and let them just kind of dissolve and pop. And she has Bobo, I think, that pops it or something. And then she talks about, she talks about an internal, yeah, she talks about an internal bully capsule where you know unfortunately for you you can't really hide from that your internal bully because it's with you inside of the inside circle of friends whereas the external bully is out there we see him we know him the bully that's in your head is with you everywhere in the process of in the form of thoughts and we found out that thoughts you can have twelve thousand to sixty thousand of those a day and eighty percent of them can be negative so please now that you all know parents you cannot give your child from a place of empty. Try to evict your own bullies, baby. And then just maybe, just maybe, just maybe you will see when your child tells you, eh, that guy looks like Uncle Ikebab. He's kind of icky. You believe your child because kids have ESP. I am saying that kids have ESP. And so we talked about that. And she gave us 12 steps to evict the bully. I have five steps, but it kind of summarizes all 12. But I'm like, recognize it. Say hello to it. Say hello, bye to it, never let it in, shut the door, lock the key, whatever, throw it away. And then start loving yourself, start being compassionate, start being empathic, yes, and having kindness to self and all of those things to yourself. You know, the case in point is this guy called um, Dave Chappelle. I don't know if you guys know him, but he was this big time comedian. And one day he just vanished. He was like, y'all, I'm out. He must have gotten to the point where he was like, I'm, I'm at the breaking point. 
I can either break or I can take a break and go back. And so when I talk about taking breaks, I mean, if you have to take a break from social media, do it. Anything that brings in that negative thoughts, whether it's your family members, your friends, social media, your coworkers, your bosses, your kids, anything that gives you that negative energy, your parents, whatever gives you that negative energy, it is okay to say to them, you know what, today, not today and cut it off. Social media especially is good, but it's also not so good. Past mistakes, past failures, past things that you just didn't work out right. Like Vicky said, it's not a failure. It just didn't work out the way you planned it. I love it because I never thought about it that way. She said, it's not a failure. It just didn't work out the way you planned it. And then who are you to see the future anyway? Maybe it was supposed to be that way. You know, you don't know because, because when you fail forward, what do you do? You go back to the drawing boards. And you look back and say, okay, how can I make this better? And then that's what you do. So Vicky, muchísimas gracias. I usually have this, my son said, let me keep this in the room so I can always show this. If you haven't gotten the book yet, go get it. You find some nice nuggets in it. We talked about compassion and empathy in it and kindness and perseverance and everything else in between. Miss Vicky, any final words? Someone, please write that down. Please write that down for me. Your, your, your value, your internal value has nothing to do with, yes. And so basically, what are we saying? We are saying, Yana, you are enough. You are not enough. You're not alone. I love it. Yes, ma'am. So don't forget, you are enough. You are enough. Please write it 10 times. You are enough. And tell yourself every morning, positive affirmations. I am enough. I had a friend of mine one time, she was a speaker at one of my events, and she taught us the alphabet affirmations. Have you heard about those? She uses alphabet. While she's running, she's a runner. She's a physical trainer. And she, while she's running, she says things like, A, I am awesome. B, I am beautiful. C, I am catchy. I don't know. D, I am divine, whatever, but she uses the alphabets to affirm herself. So do that every morning when you wake up. I am enough. You are enough. You are good enough. Maybe not for everything, pero for those things that you're good enough, you are good enough. And ask for divine intervention to open your eyes to those things that you're good enough, that you're good enough at. Because another thing that can cause you to get depressed and sad and anxious and worried really is just not being able to know yourself enough to know what are you really good at. So thank you all so much for watching us today. Thank you, Vicky. Every time we meet, I tell you we're going to have to do it again. I'm glad we're able to pull this off in a short time. I hope you will come back. Thank you all so much, so much, so much. I will be in Dallas this Saturday for the Suicide Prevention Walk. Y'all come out and let's make it happen. We're going to try to raise money for Comfort Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Y'all, please be there. I am getting, believe it or not, certified as a crisis text line counselor because I get enough people texting me stuff every day that they're doing, they're not doing well and I don't know what to say. I mean, I kind of sort of know what to say, but I don't. So I'm getting certified as a national crisis text line counselor. Then I get certified as a suicide prevention educator. I'm so excited about that. Yes. And then finally, I'm getting my teen mental health first aid certification. So your girl is busy. I'm out there trying to make a difference, you know? So y'all, come out and support Miss Vicky if you live in SoCal.
go online and find her books. And you know, you never know. You might be next. I might be calling on you next, Miss um, Chinye. You might be next to do this Facebook Live. I had so much fun doing this, Vicky. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Namaste, everyone. I'll see you all next Sunday with another topic. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's probably going to have to do with um, this shooting because it's, it's very nice. Before I forget, everyone who's watching me, please think about for the rest of the week, what do you want to do for the month of September to help prevent suicide? That is your homework. Do something, one thing, and then at the end of the month, we'll talk about what everyone did to help prevent suicide this month, okay? I don't want to give you guys ideas, but bye. Thank you, Vicky. Hasta luego. Bye. Yinkus. Oh, wow. Thank you, Yinkus. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.